This week, Dick and Jem take on their most bizarre challenge yet. Look at that. This is ace. They plan to run a pickup truck using a very unlikely fuel source. Trees for Cities are expecting the delivery of a green running machine for their big planting day at the weekend. First of all, they'll need to make the producer, a cylinder in which wood burns to produce the gas. Burning wood produces clouds of fine particles commonly called smoke. A filter is needed to get rid of the smoke by cleaning out particulates such as soot and ash. A radiator will cool down the gas which could reach temperatures in excess of 700 degrees centigrade. Finally, before the gas enters the engine, it must go through a mixer ensuring the right balance of gas to air. I think it's brilliant. It just seemed a little bit unlikely. But it's not that difficult. Look, here, watch this. It's a little cooking gas. No. A kettle full of wood. Oh, yeah. yeah? Okay. That's it. I reckon we're nearly ready to try lighting that. Yeah. Whoa! Yay! Hey! Look at that! That's properly amazing. I'm a complete convert to wood gas now. Okay. Running vehicles on wood gas might sound crazy, but there were over one million gasifiers in use during World War II. They were particularly common in Scandinavia, where oil was scarce but wood was plentiful. In peacetime, oil became readily available and wood power was abandoned and largely forgotten. Well, maybe. Dick and Jem are convinced that once they convert the pickup to run on their freshly chopped fuel, it will be much less polluting. But just how dirty is their vehicle in its present state? They're all set up to run a DIY emissions test. Where's the exhaust pipe? A standard internal combustion engine emits carbon dioxide, sulfur, nitrogen compounds and long chain hydrocarbons. They're all bad news for us and the planet. Right, pump on. Call them out. OK, carbon monoxide, Yeah. 1.86% by volume. Right. Carbon dioxide, 13.5% by volume. Hydrocarbons, yeah. 26 parts per million. Dick and Jem are determined to green up this pickup. So it's goodbye to that petrol tank, and it's farewell to that nasty cocktail of chemicals. This job is going to be a masterclass in recycling. This old water heater is being given a new lease of life. It will become the powerhouse of the system, the wood-burning producer. The thing is, all that's going to have to come out. It's a good-sized fuel store. Yes. Just not a good size hole for it. Oh! There must be something to do with that. Fuel will be loaded through this hole, but the real action happens at the bottom of the cylinder, the burner. Dick's making the burner from an old beer keg. He's cut out an access hatch in the burner to clear out waste ash. The charcoal will sit on this grate. He's fitted a handle to the outside of his beer keg burner. A quick turn will shake up the settled ash and should ensure a strong, steady high temperature burn. The two sections of the producer are finished. Hands out. My hands are out. It's time to snap together Jem's recycled immersion heater and Dick's beer keg burner. Gasifiers are highly efficient. Unlike steam engines, which waste energy up a chimney, they are sealed units, which chemically process their own exhaust gases. Wood is a dense solid fuel, which produces large volumes of carbon dioxide and water vapor when burnt. All this gas is sucked into the reduction zone, where it reacts with the high temperature carbon of the charcoal. This reaction reduces the number of oxygen atoms in the CO2 and H2O, and produces two new highly flammable gases, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The gas will enter the cylinder and be forced downwards in a spinning motion. Centrifugal force will push the heavier ash and soot to the sides of the cylinder. While the impurities fall to the bottom of the cylinder, 
the clean gas, now minus the smoke particles, rises and is sucked through the system towards the engine. Right. Ready for this? Yes. Right, where's all the bits? That's our ash collector. Aschenbecker, I think it is. Yes. There we go. All right. Spins around. So, yeah, hot gas in there. Yeah. Cyclone. All the dust gets shaken out and down the bottom there. And the beautiful, clean, flammable gas comes, comes out the top. up the inside of the, of the cyclone. Yeah. That's nice and strong, is it? The filtered gas is still very hot, and now it needs to be cooled down by running it through a radiator. When gas heats up, it expands, and the molecules are spread out thinly over a greater volume. If the gas is cooled, it will contract, and the molecules will be much more concentrated. The greater the concentration of molecules the gas has, the more power it will deliver to the engine. The mixer is the only modification to the engine. It replaces the carburetor. Gas and air are sucked into the mixer and then enter the engine by moving the throttle valve. Wood gas often varies in quality. An air intake valve must be frequently adjusted to ensure the air gas mix entering the engine gives optimal performance. This valve is connected to a control attached to the gear stick. Let's find out what happens. You ready? The big question now is can the gas travel right through the system to the front of the pickup? Hey, we've got smoke! <laughs> At the front. But any smoke should have been cleaned out by their filters. If it's going to fire up the engine, this should be a mix of vapour and flammable gas. There's a very quick way to find out. Are you ready? Yep. Let's see what happens. Yes! Oh! That's gas! That's brilliant! Look at that! It's such a good blue colour as well. It's the result they need. Nick and Jen want to find out whether their machine really is green. Do you want to insert the probe into the exhaust pipe, sir? We're taking readings. Here we go. What are we going to get this time? I don't know. It's not saying anything now. It's readings. They nervously await the results. Like the oh, oh! Carbon monoxide is down, sir. Carbon monoxide Look is down. Look at the hydrocarbons are down. Hi, that's right, the ones go. I want to get rid of. Right, OK, let's print those results. It's fantastic news. The exhaust from their wood-burning truck produces 50% less poisonous carbon monoxide and 26 times less hydrocarbons now they've thrown away the petrol tank. Look at this. Wow! There's hardly anything coming out. Good, good. While the guys master the driving, Johan stokes the fuel. They must keep the revs high. This allows the engine to suck up more air to keep a strong fire going in the producer. Because they can't get into high gear, the truck speed should be limited. But that doesn't seem to be affecting these guys. It's a slightly unconventional driving test, but then this is certainly no ordinary car.